I have always loved Irish chain quilts. This is a double Irish chain quilt from my antique collection. It's well worn and the batting is showing through in many spots, but it probably kept a family cozy for years. The patchwork quilt holds a prominent place in Ireland's impoverished history. In the northern rural parts of the country, quilts went well with the peat fires and providing warmth to families in their drafty stone thatched roof cottages, while Irish chain quilts were well known in the villages of Ireland. Wendy Gilbert is joining me today to share her wealth of knowledge on the triple Irish chain quilt. Welcome, Wendy. You're at least part Irish, aren't you? Well, actually, all I'm half Irish, and I love Irish chain quilts. Look at the triple Irish chain I found in my antique collection. The quilter used 49 one and a half inch squares to make this block. She used a pink bubblegum fabric in the center and did a beautiful job of hand quilting in the solid background squares. She finished it off with a seminal border. I copied that look in this scrap quilt. This scrap quilt uses a lot of different fabrics, some stripes, small scale prints, but it still has 49 squares in block A. But we're going to use strips to make our blocks instead of these <laughs> little squares. You know, once a stripper, you never go back to squares. <laughs> We've been stripping together for a long time, haven't we, Wendy? About 11 years. Oh, my gosh. Well, this one is great, and I see that the quilt maker used a large professional quilting machine to finish that whole quilt. Great. Look at the yeah. back. Look yeah. at the back. Isn't it beautiful? That is gorgeous. The last scrap quilt I have here was made by my good friend, Luann. She used different colors in her scrap quilt, a lot darker, but a nice look to it when it's finished. Again, the 49 squares make up the block. She machine quilted her, her block B and did it with a feather pattern. Looks great. And a cable stitch on both outside borders makes it, kind of finishes it off nice. You know, this is a perfect quilt for using up your stash. Now, do you have a stash, Wendy? You know me, I'm not a big stash <laughs> person. Well, speaking of scraps, Patches appeared on the trousers of male peasants until very little of the original material could be seen. The poor people of Ireland would dig around in the rubbish cans of the rich, seeking materials for their quilts. Well, fortunately, we can just buy all the fabric we want and we can make our quilts with planned fabrics. This is a planned scrap quilt that Marty made. She chose a really interesting background fabric and then pulled her colors from it for the chain. They contrast really nicely. They almost look solid from a distance. Mm -hmm. And I like the uh, three lines of diagonal quilting that she did right through that chain as well. The last quilt I brought today was made by Linda and she chose light, airy sort of fabrics. They look great together. They sort of blend and give you that watercolor mm -hmm. look, Elle, don't you think? Beautiful. Just beautiful quilts. Well, join us and we'll get started on a planned three-color triple Irish chain quilt. throw salt over our shoulder just for good luck. Looks like you and Cynthia had a lot of luck, Elle, when you selected the fabrics for this quilt. The dark medium, fabric number one, looks great running down the center of the quilt. Fabric number two, the lighter shade, frames this fabric number one and makes it really stand out. The dark blue goes around the background fabric framing it, and the three colors are repeated in the seminal border. It's perfect. Well, Wendy's friend Diane had a different idea. She placed a medium value in the background position, and then she just changed the whole look of the quilt. She used two different fabrics in her chain. You can see that dark floral running through, and then that medium, the background on either side of it. It just looks great. Well, the best thing is, is that you can change the look just with value placement. On this one, I used the lightest piece of fabric running through the chain, then medium on both sides, and framed those two pieces with that dark green. And ooh, I just love 
that large scale floral print. Well now Amy did another look. She selected a large scale dark for the background and then in her chain her lightest medium is the one that's running through and making the X and then on either side she's got darker pieces and they all read solid from a distance so they just blend right in with that floral print. Well this is the block that we're making. This is block A right here with all of these different pieces in. You do good work, Wendy. Thank you. <laughs> all those pieces match perfectly. Now when you look at this, the X going right through there is fabric one. And then on either side of fabric one is fabric two, both sides fabric two. This is fabric three right here. And then you've got that background piece right beside it. Now what size are the strips? Two and a quarter inches. All right, I can cut two and a quarter inch strips. Now I have a couple of pieces stacked up, all ready to go. And this is a torn edge. This was torn right from the bolt. Oh, Wendy, do you like to tear your fabric from the bolt? Yes, I do. Put it on the straight of the grain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna bear down, cut off that torn edge, get rid of that. And then just take the six by 24 and line it up. Now two and a quarter, boy, that is a tricky measurement. That's what I find. So I'm lining up the quarter inch line basically on the inch line so that I can see it the whole way along there. Okay, bear down hard, cut away. Now I don't like to pick up and move. I pick my ruler, I'm following my grid. So the next two and a quarter inch mark would be at four and a half. Actually, I did a couple little cheat things on here. Okay, bear down. And how many of these strips do I need to cut, Wendy? Well, fabric number one, you're going to need 13 strips. Okay. Fabric number two, you're going to need 20. Okay. Fabric number three, you're going to need 12. And the background color, you're only going to need four. Oh, I like that. So that's your paste up there? This is the paste up sheet I did. And I just wanted to mention that uh, if your strips come up all different lengths, not to worry, because we base this quilt on a 42-inch strip length. So basically, after you get your strips cut, just get rid of those selvages. And because we're making a baby size quilt today, we're going to cut these into 14, approximately 14-inch strips. Okay, so I can just go ahead and line up my ruler right here. Trim off those selvage edges all at once and cut it get into 14. Of them. Right. Okay. Now, if you're doing other size quilts, what else do you need? What other size strips? Well, um, the baby takes 14. The lap or twin coverlet size takes 21 inch strips. The double queen size takes a full 42 inch strip. And the king size takes a 42 inch and a 21 inch strip. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna get these strips all cut and we'll be ready for sewing. An old Irish saying is, never let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Well, I think we need to know what both hands are doing. I think so today. I think so. <laughs> we have all 49 strips, all 49 14 inch strips lined up and they're ready for sewing. And once they're lined up, they should look exactly like your paste up sheet so that when you look at the strips, you see that fabric one making that X right through there. There are seven strips across and seven strips down for the rows. Now this is the first row right here and this is the row that we want to focus on and sew first. And so we don't get confused. I'm just going to take this ruler and cover up all of those other rows so we only see this one. So now what do we do, Wendy? Take your second strip and flip it onto your first strip. Okay, right and here. That's right. And then your fourth strip, flip it onto your third strip. Okay. And your sixth strip gets flipped onto your fifth strip. Then stack them up in order. Okay, first pair. That's right. Second pair. Okay. And third pair. Right. Then we can just assembly line sew them and that will be whoops. Very fast. <laughs> they got lost one there. Oh. <laughs> and you have one strip left over that's just going to lay there until we get these pairs sewn. So match up those top edges. Okay. And your side edges. All right. And about 15 stitches per inch. Tight stitch. Real tight. And seam allowance. Quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. Now I like to use this quarter inch foot right here. Ooh, that just speeds that right through there. Grab up the next piece. Ooh, let me get it. 
and feed it right behind. But not all sewing machines have this quarter inch foot. So what do you like to use? Well, I really like to use the metallic magnetic seam guide. Um, it works on most machines, especially if you have a metal throat plate. Also, this Sew Perfect gauge works really well. If you have an electronic machine, then this just sticks right to your throat plate. It works really good. That way you get a nice quarter inch seam, and when you're sewing all of these two and a quarter inch squares together, you have 49 of them, so you want them to fit really, really well. <laughs> you really find out if you're a good sewer or not, huh? That's right. Okay, now I have all of these pairs sewn together. Let me just clip them apart, see if I can keep them in order. I'm sure keeping them in order is one of the most important things about this quilt. Now, what am I going to do? You're going to open them up, and then you're going to flip the second pair onto the first pair. Okay. Oh, I get this lined up. Make sure I can keep an eye on my paste-up sheet. Open That's up, ready. Open that other set, and then you add that single piece. Okay, right on here. Onto, yeah, onto your six strip. Okay. Assembly line, sew those two now. All right, see if I can get that lined up straight. Okay, I'm on to it, Wendy. Okay. One of the things I do notice about my students is it's important to get those edges matched up really well. Sometimes the bottom one slips under the top one. Yeah. You want to get the pins ready while I finish this? Yeah, we need to get some pins marked so we can label our strip sets. So we're going to take some masking tape and just fold it along the bottom edge of this pin. And then since Elle is making strip set one, we're going to label this number one. And we're going to pin it into the first sewn strip so that we don't get confused because our next step L is going to be pressing. Oh. And it's real easy to get confused. So we're <laughs> going to keep them straight. So I'm going to make one of these for every strip set. And even though L's only working on the first row right now, eventually you're going to have seven rows of strip sets for this particular quilt. Okay. So now I have four sewn together and three sewn together. Okay, flip those three onto the four. Okay, I basically have halves and now I'm sewing them into one hole. Okay. You know when I went I made the uh, quilt above the mantle. I had so much fun. Actually, my sister Pat called around noon and I hadn't even started on the blocks and we made a deal and said, "Well, we can't go for our walk until those blocks are done." And do you know by three o'clock we were out walking? I thought it was pretty good. What do you think? I think it's great. I think that's the advantage of doing all this assembly line sewing. Okay, now, here is my row, all set. All right. And this is my first strip. So just take this and pin it in here. And the reason we don't want to put that masking tape right onto the strip, because we're going to leave this in while we sew it. Okay. So that way we'll always know that this is strip set one, and the pin tells us which was the first sewn strip. Perfect. Now, we're going back and sewing all of these rows together. Our seven strip sets are sewn together and they're in perfect order. Now you can check them against your paste-up sheet and make sure that you have that X running right through there once you place all seven out in that order. Now Wendy is our perfect presser. <laughs> I love to press out and if you do it correctly in this quilt, Everything will butt together, your seams will match, and we'll have perfect sewn strips. Ah, no pinning. No, no pinning <laughs> at all. I'll go for that one. Our first thing we're going to do is set our seam. So we're going to line each sewn seam up along the grid of our mat and give it a real quick press. Do you know why? Well, it sinks the threads in to each other. Right. Uh, sometimes when you sew, you get a little tweak, a little... Uh, bow in your strips and that'll straighten them out, especially using the grid. That helps. Uh, what else? That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> Sounds good. And if you're pressing them on the grid, then you do straighten them out as you go along. Right. Okay, then after we get our seam set, then we're going to take that first strip that has the mark in it, the pin, to remind us that that's the first strip, Smart. and line it up on that grid. And while we're holding that strip with our iron, we're going to gently pull with this one, and all our seams are going to go away from that first strip. Ooh, but keep that along good. the grid. 
if it gets off the grid, then you're going to get those bowed strips. So you want to keep it right on the grid. A little bit of pressure. It's nice that this is a half strip. It fits on this size of a pressing mat so well. But actually, you can get a mat for your ironing board if you're going to be doing those 42 inch long strips for double queen. Mm -hmm. Oh, and King uses one too. Right. Now look how nice this lays. They're nice and straight. Would you please square up that uneven end while I do strip set two? Okay, strip set two. Okay, now let me just take the ruler. We have one side that's pretty straight because that's where we started sewing. But right along here, I'm going to line up on the straight top. Just trim off that end. Just get rid of it, Wendy. Good job. <laughs> now this time, we've already set the seams on this strip set. But um, again, we have our pin. This time, we're going to go towards the pin for strip set number two. Okay, so two, two. T o two, two, right. <laughs> to two. And then all the rest of our strip sets, L, we do in the same manner as this. You got it? You got the idea? Okay, so if one is away from, one is odd man out, so go away from. So all of the odds are away from the number. And two is even, so you, all of the evens, you go to or toward. Correct. Got it. <laughs> okay, now if you would square that end up again. Okay, you can have that back. This is our first strip set, and we're going to lay it on our pressing mat, lined up with the grid again, and this time our seams are going down, and our strip set is right sides up. Okay. Then we're going to take strip set two and lay it right on top. Now we have those nice trimmed edges, and we're going to lock those seams together. Kind of just with our fingers a little bit, get them real nice, get those edges as close together as we can. Hit it with the iron because this will set them together again, make them much easier to press and sew and cut. And I'm going to give this back to you. Okay, now let me pull out this pin. Ooh, do I dare take out this pin? Because I want to line this up on the grid, make sure, ooh, it feels great. And right here, oh, I think I need to stand up for this one. So just take your rotary cutter and your ruler, and right on this left hand first, I want to do about a quarter inch, squaring off, get rid of those, and then cut this into, what was that? Two, two and, and a quarter? quarter. Two and a quarter inch strips. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're making a baby quilt, so how many pairs do I need to cut right now? Five. Five, okay. We have five A blocks in the baby size quilt. Okay. Well, we're just going to go back, press all of our strips, and cut all of our pairs. Wendy and I are going to dance an Irish jig when we have block A finished. Now, we already have our pairs layered and cut right sides together. And I found the pins helpful in keeping the pairs marked. This is row one and two right here, and that seam is going up. And then right next to it, rows three and four, layered, seam going up, five and six. And then right here, this is row seven, and it's just a single row. Now we're going to just pick up those first two pairs, and they are great and easy to match because of the way we pressed and cut them. So just put them under your presser foot. Maintain that same quarter inch seam that you've been sewing all along. Now right here I like to roll it open, look at it, and then roll it in. Make sure those seams are perfectly matched up. You can use your finger at this time, or if you want to go ahead and use your stiletto, that works great too. But just go ahead and assembly line sew right down through each one of these rows. Ooh, and sometimes you have to give a little bit of a tug just to make sure you get each one perfect. Let me see one more. Hold that tight. Now actually, because you do use a consistent seam throughout, if it's not a perfect quarter inch, consistency is also very important. Okay, now, Wendy, I have the pair sewn. I want you to just go ahead, show us how to press that piece. We're going to drop this on the pressing mat again, lined up with the grid. We have the first row on top. We're going to set those seams. Then we're going to flip open row one and press that seam towards row one. All right. Looks so good. tell me, Wendy, how are my matches? Your matches are great, <laughs> Elle. So I don't have to hang it high and keep it moving? Nope. Oh, good. That's perfect. <laughs> great. Well, what we've done 
is also set up the seams in an order because we want the seams to be pressed away from the center. So right now, this first seam is going to be behind row one. In the next pair, ooh, am I fast. <laughs> then the seam is going to be behind three. Now this is the center point. So you're going to be going the opposite way out towards the right on this side. And then this seam will also go to the right. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this and sew this into one half, just like we did with the strips, and sew this into one half. And then once these two units are sewn in halves, then I'm just going to push them together into one complete block. So Wendy, take one block and just show the last final step. At this point, some of your seams are pressed and some of them aren't, so we have to get them all going from the center out. So I like to just hang this over the edge of my pressing mat and press them away from the center. That way I'm not dis disrupting the seams that are on the other side. Then just flip it around, do the same thing on the other side. And we have a finished block. That is looking great. Now, should we sew these or should we just let the fairies do the sewing? Now this is no blarney. Block B takes half the time as block A, but you do need to finish block A first because the measurements of block B are based on block A. Now right here we need to have a background strip for rows 1 and 5, and this piece right here is cut the same measurement as three rows sewn together. So the best way to do this is just to take the two outside edges, the two outside rows, and just flip them up under and measure them. And actually, ooh, if you were good, that measurement should be approximately five and three-fourths inches. And oh, measure a couple of times just to check and make sure your sewing is straight. Now, you're going to go ahead, cut that background strip that width, whatever that is, and then onto it, you're going to add fabric three and fabric two in a pair on one side, and then the identical on the other side. So that's all you have to do for rows one and five. Now, rows two and four are just about identical, but this time you only need to have one row flipped under on each side. Let's pull that out. Take the measurement, ooh, let's see, okay, nine and a fourth, hopefully it's also nine and a fourth on the other end. So cut your background strip, that measurement, and then onto either side of it, just add one fabric three to each side. Well, Wendy, are you still pressing? I press quilts, but not shirts, though. <laughs> well, but let's see those. <laughs> here's our strip sets all pressed. They're pressed in opposite directions so that we can, once again, layer cut them just like we did for the block A's. So we're going to lay out our first strip set and the seams go down. Our second strip set right on top with the seams going up and they'll butt together real nicely and lock. And then we're going to take off approximately a quarter of an inch off this edge. I'm going to make sure you cut straight, Wendy. Ooh, oh, you did I good. I don't think I got that all the <laughs> way through. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Away from you, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look like you? Get there rid of go. it. <laughs> and then we're going to cut a two and a quarter inch strip. Uh-oh, got to yeah. do it right. You're sure right. Okay, then after we've cut those, they're already layered and ready for the sewing machine, just like our strips in block A. We feed them through and we have all our rows put together. Okay, so that's one and two and four and five. Right. Okay, for the very last step, all you need to do is cut one section that is the same width as three rows sewn together. And the, the original measurement that we used was five and three-fourths inches. So you need a background strip five and three-fourths inches by, cut by, the measurement of the whole block. And your block should be approximately 12 and 3 fourths inches square. Wouldn't that be great if it were? Now, go ahead and take these pieces. Ooh, I always get confused. Where does it go? Like this? That's yes, right. on one side. And then, oop, turn it around and put it on the other. 
and you just need to sew these on either side. Well, block A's and block B's were so much fun to do. I want to go up in the attic and find some scraps to make more blocks. But first, we have to sew our block B's together.